Rockstar Games. Can you think of another video game company as prolific and great as them? Well, yeah, I can think of a fucking few because Rockstar is currently shit. Okay, before you jump off the video, there is a method to my madness. We're going to get in depth about this, so strap on your light up sneakers, smack up your 15 cent hooker and drive a car off a bridge because this is gonna get gnarly. But before we jump into it, only about 10% of you guys that watch these videos are actually subscribed. What is with that? Please fix that. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit the notification bell so you stay up to date with all the videos that we upload. Because my god, we are going to be delivering some great content now that we've hit that hit that milestone of 1,000 subscribers. We're almost at 1.1. So get excited. Rockstar were one of the most trusted companies back in the 2000s, releasing some of the greatest hits like Manhunt, Bully, Midnight Club, Red Dead Redemption, and um, oh, they had this one really popular series that I can't remember for the life of me. What was it again? Oh well, it'll come to me. With all these successful and entertaining titles under their belt, they had crafted themselves a recipe for success. Anything that would make would score them huge props. Well, almost everything. So, you would think that they could channel their success forever. Well, they did, for the most Grand part. Grand Theft Auto! That's what it was! Grand Theft Auto! GTA is their most well-known series without any doubt. I can bet that anyone who's owned a game console in their life has probably played at least one GTA game. I mean, my first one was San Andreas when it came out, and I was just a little baby whoopie gucci goo. After this little angel received his first copy, he spent his childhood smacking up prostitutes, running down civilians, flying around in cars, and shooting rival gang members whilst NWA loudly played in the background. I got an addiction to the series. I picked up every game that was available on the PS2 and just constantly played them. I loved the shenanigans I could get into as a kid. I didn't care too much about the story though, I just enjoyed getting into trouble. And then, the announcement of the next generation systems. My family didn't exactly have money growing out of their derrieres, so as much as I wanted an Xbox 360, I wasn't getting it. And I definitely wasn't getting a PS3 because you could fuck right off with that price tag! Who the fuck did you expect to buy this console for that price, Sony? The Queen? I, I don't think she's a fan. I guess that's funny. Time had passed and at that age I was chill with just playing my PS2 and creating wrestlers in WWE. And we also had a Wii, so like, I got really damn good at bowling straight 300s, my guy. But I was not at all aware that a new GTA game had just been released not a year beforehand. And I was missing it. I had barely any clue it existed. Sure, I watched YouTube a lot, but I wasn't exactly versed well with the internet controls. <laughs> my first experience of GTA 4 was on my cousin's PS3. And from that moment, I knew I needed a next-gen console so I could play the beauty that it was. It took a while, but the next year on my birthday, I was graced with an Xbox 360 and five games. One of them just so being Grand Theft Auto 4. And my good golly god did it blow me away! updated graphics, the new physics engine, the incredible voice acting, and HD titties! 12 year old me was absolutely floored. I would play GTA 4 so often, my other games were more or less neglected. I wanted to unlock all of Liberty City so I could roam around everywhere in whatever vehicle I could. I wanted to pass through these missions as the excellent Nico Bellic. And fuck it, when Roman called, I didn't hang up. I fucking went and did whatever he wanted. It felt like doing something with a friend and that was nice because I didn't have friends. <laughs> but being as young as I was, I never finished it. I had the attention span of a doorknob being gripped by Uncle Dave after he slapped around his willy. So I put the game down and only played it every now and then. But sure enough, I didn't realize that there was an expansion known as the Episodes from Liberty City expansion. And it was incredible. You got two separate stories playing out at the same time as the main game, even crossing over at a point. Welcoming to the team, we had the Ballad of Gay Tony and the Lost and Damned. These were fantastic additions to an already outstanding game, and now you can experience even more that it has to offer. Whether you wanted to play as the badass Johnny Klebitz and follow his story with the Lost MC Biker Gang, or the cool and chill Luis Fernando Lopez, taking on the missions of Gay Tony and having some fun along the way. 
No matter which one you started, you would always be taken on a ride. Oh, and the entirety of the map is unlocked in these expansions, so if you just wanted to roam around, these would be the easiest games to jump into. Now where could it go from here? Well, one of my best mates finally got his hands on the game. We finally got around to playing GTA 4's online multiplayer. We had so much fun just messing around with each other, running one another over, having races, shooting other players, having a whole bunch of fun. And don't forget the airport, my god, the amount of time, the amount of hours I put into just hitting those boards at the weird angles and the top speed, just to go flying through the air hoping you don't blow up when you hit the ground. GTA 4's online was very interesting. It would start out by spawning in the far left of the map. There are loose guns everywhere, and you basically just run up and take what you want and go cause mayhem. But if you die, you'll lose it all. But as standard and simple as it was, it was a lot of fun. Just an open sandbox, infinite amounts of vehicles to steal, weapons laid out everywhere, and no worries about anything. Just kill, drive, and mess around. How could it get any better than this? Why did I move here? I guess it was the weather. Yo! Oh shit, son! On November 2nd, 2011, Rockstar Games released a teaser trailer for their brand new upcoming Grand Theft Auto game, Grand Theft Auto V. And holy fuck did it get people hyped. This trailer showed off so many great things, like the updated and crisp graphics, new features like convertibles with automatic roofs, oh and you can fly planes again. Hell, they even implemented animals into it. Everyone was like, look at the lighting, look at the foliage, look at the rendered distance, look at the cars, look at the planes, look at the people, look at the bombs, look at the dogs, look at everything! And boy did we. This trailer basically caused an online frenzy. But there was an issue. There was no release date listed. All we had was basically an engine demo showing off what they can do now. How long would we actually have to wait for a release date? Well, on November 5th, 2012, the official Rockstar Games website announced it was taking pre-orders for the game. And with that known, the number of pre-orders began to skyrocket. And after a few days, on November 15th, 2012, the second trailer arose on the internet. And with that, the interest grew even higher. And so did the pre-orders. This time around, the trailer showed off a bit more of the story. We officially had three main characters to play as, Michael, Franklin, and Trevor. This was an exciting announcement. It's not something you really got to experience in games at that point. Three separate storylines that would all intertwine, but still exist on their own as well. Quite honestly, an incredible detail. Everyone was so curious as to how it would work. And finally, we had a release window to look forward to. Spring 2013. So, we get to expect it for Q2 of 2013? That wasn't too far away. So people were chucking down their pre-order deposits and getting hyped. A bit of time went by with still no official announcement as to the release date of GTA V. We knew Q2, but when? We eventually were graced with reports from different sites in December of 2012, detailing that the game would release March 25th, 2013. Yo! This was so close! I was so excited. Only a couple of months and we could finally be grazed by the sweet relief that it would finally be in our hands. But unfortunately, we would have to wait a little bit longer. In January of 2013, we got the news that GTA 5 would be delayed with the release date pushed back to September 17th. Well, son of a bitch! How long we waited just to be told we would have to wait again? Back in those days, people weren't as relaxed with the idea of a delay. People immediately think the worst, like it was going to be another Duke Nukem Forever scandal. What about the game, Duke? Was it any good? Yeah, but after 12 years, it should be. <laughs> But it was obvious that they just needed some extra time to pat out the kinks so we had the best release possible. It's Rockstar after all, we can trust them. Along the way we were given with more trailers to tide us over, like the three individual character trailers and the official gameplay trailer. And boy, it revealed a lot more than it did before. We got to see how the characters would actually be implemented, how you would be able to swap between them, the fact that they all had their own abilities and lives to live. We were also shown the number of things that there was to do in the world of GTA 5, such as car modifications, random encounters, sports, parachuting, and so much more. Plus, we also got to see how great the graphics truly looked. And at the time, they were spectacular. And could you guess it? The number of pre-orders got even higher and higher. But we aren't done yet. 
we still had one big announcement to come. The Grand Theft Auto online trailer was released August 16th, 2013, and it had people absolutely shook! This brand new online experience for GTA 5 would exist as a standalone presence, taking place a bit before the in-game events would. It showcased all the new things you could do. You could do missions to earn money. You could spend that money on materialistic items like clothes, haircut, vehicles, and more. It boasted huge lobbies, and the fact that you can interact with all the players in different ways. You could own your own apartment and store vehicles in them. But how about the other ways of earning money? Well, they did mention the ability to rob stores, which was quite cool. But the biggest mention of the video was without any doubt, heists. Planning out a heist with four friends online had people thrilled. Imagine getting three of your best buds together to plan out a huge heist, do the setups and everything was a massive payout? <sighs> Rockstar, you guys have absolutely nailed this. The announcement of online was a big power move by Rockstar, and as I mentioned before, numbers were soaring. The pre-order numbers for both consoles stood at about 3,522,206 copies for just the US alone. That's roughly over $210 million that Rockstar would be racking in pre-orders alone. Not at all including day one purchases. To put that into perspective, GTA 4 made about $310 million in sales on day one. Not in pre-orders, sales. That's one hell of a payday for Rockstar. And they hadn't even released the game yet. That's absolutely insane. But it gets more insane. The day was September 17th, GTA 5 day I like to call it firstly, and secondly my stepbrother's birthday. So was bud. Stores were packed, late night releases had lines all the way out the storefronts, hell that's an understatement. They were outside of the shopping centres. No one had even played the game yet and it had already gathered masses of people to pick up their copy as early as they could. So just guess how much money GTA 5 made, day one. Remember GTA 4 made around $310 million day one. So how much did GTA 5 make? Well, if you guessed about 815 million, you would be completely right! And creepily accurate if you didn't already know beforehand. And within three days, it closed the 1 billion dollar mark. More perspective analysis for you guys, GTA 4 made 500 million dollars more than that in its entire sales history. That is absolutely fucking insane! And personally, do I think it was deserving of that much moolah? Absolutely. I still remember how excited I was when I picked up my copy of the game. I basically locked myself away in my room the entire day just so I could play it. The opening in North Yankton giving you a small taste of the heist feels, the first character swap between Michael and Trevor, and showing off their character abilities. You get to experience a wave of combat against some cops, you get to experience the driving controls, plus the snow looked fantastic. The opening really shows you what you need to know. You should already know how the story goes from here. The crew crash the car, they try to escape, Michael is shot and presumably dead and you escape the scene as Trevor. Michael is still alive. You figure out he faked his death, it flashes to the present day. You find out he has family problems and life just sucks. You are then introduced to Franklin and his buddy Lamar, as you are boosting cars, so you think. Franklin is like the fresh one of the group, small time thievery and crime, but he's cool and relatable. You race the cars back to find out you are repossessing them for a man named Simeon. You work for him, helping him out with repo jobs, and a few missions later you have to repossess an SUV from a house up in the Vinewood Hills. Very posh estate. You break into the house, sneak by the tenants, jump in the SUV, and get out scot-free. Little did you know, Michael is sitting in the back seat of the car. This car is his son's. Banter ensues, and he convinces you to drive the car through the front of the dealership. Time passes, and Michael is visited by Franklin, who wants to be taught how things should work by a veteran of the craft. Reluctantly, Michael agrees, showing him the ropes. In time, Michael makes a mistake when he finds his wife fucking her tennis coach. He chases him to a stilt house in the Vinewood Hills, where he then tears the house off the stilts in revenge. But the house doesn't belong to the coach. It belongs to a very powerful man known as Martin Madrazo. And he is not happy. He visits Michael and tells him to get the money in return for the damages or he is in deep shit. So Michael gets in touch with his old pal creepy uncle Lester, so he can then get a heist organized to pay off this debt. They spend the time planning it out before it's all a go. Michael then recruits Franklin on for the heist. 
They rob a jewellery store and it goes off more or less without a hitch. Michael and Franklin have to lay low and we are introduced to Trevor. And he is a crazy motherfucker. The first moments are him fucking some chick. He notices the heist on TV. It clicks in his brain. Michael fucking Townley. The chick's boyfriend comes around to confront him. It happens to be Johnny from the Lost and Damned expansion. But he doesn't last long before his brain matter is left on the bottom of Trevor's shoe. Trevor decides to follow up on the news and try and figure out if his hunch is true or not. Before we know it, Trevor shows up at Michael's house unannounced. It's an awkward meeting, but they'll have to team together because Michael's daughter Tracy is about to make a fool of herself on live television. So they go to stop her. Then they sort out the famous shame incident and finally all the characters get to meet up for the first time. And the rest is history. Oh, that was a lot. It not only accounts for like 25 to 30% of the game. There was still so many missions, so many heists, and so many tense moments to be had throughout the rest of this game. And when all was done, many wanted more. Which, you wouldn't have to wait too long before GTA Online was released to the masses. This was going to tie people over for the moment. It was time to grab some friends, jump online, and cause some mayhem. But first you gotta complete a 30 minute or so tutorial segment. Okay, that's fine. Now we can jump along with friends and do missions to make some money. Oh, but the server's gonna crash. Well, I'll just wait until it's fixed, I guess. So, totally unplanned everyone, but this is like two weeks after I started recording the script and I started editing. Uh, I've been editing for the past two weeks, it's still not done yet, I'm at the halfway point as you can see in the video, and funnily enough, I'm trying to get footage for, for the game. And specifically, I wanted to actually get footage of the game having issues and stuff. And funnily enough, on both consoles, the Xbox One X and the PS4, one is a disc and one is digital, they are both having issues. You can see right now on the screen, there is an alert for my load save data for character two. And then on my Xbox One, when you load into the game, all of the surrounding area just glitches out and doesn't load in and render in properly and the game freezes. I don't know what's going on with GTA right now, but today is the 26th of June and oh my god, this is so frustrating. <laughs> GTA Online had a really rocky start and people weren't entirely pleased. GTA 5 hit off without any issues for the most part, but online is nothing but a mudslide. It just keeps going down. So while servers were down, it was a matter of just playing single player a bit more. Maybe you had missed out on some of the side content. Gotta do something to pass the time. But when you finally log in and get to stay on the servers, you get to experience one of the most enjoyable online experiences ever. You have this huge open sandbox to explore with your friends, missions to complete, money to make, RP to gain, but it didn't take long for people to realize that there was a bit of a grind. A lot of things such as weapons and vehicle paints were locked behind a level wall, so you'd have to level up. But doing missions could only get you so much before you started to get quite monotonous. And how about purchases? Cars were expensive if you were trying to grind for them. Sure, you could get the cheap crappy cars, but no one wants that. Plus, everyone wanted the big $400,000 apartments with amazing cars inside. But to grind for those, it was one hell of a process. And at this point, there was no word about when heists were coming and what the future would bring. But luckily, if you were stupid enough to partake in a deal with the devil, which I was, microtransactions existed. Woo! Woohoo! Yeah! Microtransactions. Fuck yeah, bro. I love them. In the form of what are called shark cards, you could spend real money to get fake money so you can buy your digital house and your digital cars to mess around with. But be careful, if your car gets blown up or you damage it, you gotta pay for insurance so you can get it back. Then you have to start spending your digital money, which you spent real money on so you can repay your digital car. It's a weird process. Like, in my head, the in-game currency has an existing value in the real world. Like, $20 or so is like 1,250,000 in-game dollars. It's one hell of a currency exchange, but it exists. But luckily, if you spent that $20 or so, you do get quite a bit out of it. You can get your apartment with the 10 car garage and fill it with some pretty nice supercars and sports cars. You can go buy some guns and ammo. Still, it would have been nicer if the rewards for missions were a bit more fair to the player, instead of it just being a really drawn out redundant grind. As time went on, we started to get our first bits of DLC for the game. And no, it wasn't story DLC like people were hoping for, but it was still coming apparently. We were going to get so-called free online updates that release new things in the game for purchase. Bringing up my fact before about currency exchange and such, 
the DLC technically isn't free, because you have to spend the money in-game on the new things. And sure, if you earn money, it's not as bad. But again, I feel in-game currency counts in the real world. So in my mind, I spent 200 in-game dollars on some board shorts when I could have kept that 0.000006 cents of real world money for something important. Of course, I'm joking and stretching the truth, but these DLCs weren't free to me and they only started to get more expensive. But let's take a break from online for a moment, because with the release of the brand new consoles, the PS4 and the Xbox One, Rockstar revealed that their game was optimized specifically for the new generation of consoles. People were excited, but not as excited as before. Was it worth it to buy the same game again? play through all the campaign again on a different console, and what about all the online progress we made? Do we have to restart that again? Luckily, Rockstar thought ahead. GTA 5 on the new consoles obviously brought the true graphic capabilities at the time to a full. It improved on bugs and glitches, and also released the new first person mode. Plus, if you were returning, you would get a whole bunch of bonus goodies. And as for online, you could transfer your old progress to the new console. So, no fear of losing everything. Yeah. I bought it. And why wouldn't I want to get the game the definitive way it was meant to be played? Nothing was too different, it definitely looked better, but it was still enjoyable to play around the second time. So I have no real issues there. And these extra goodies were fun to play around with, but online had no real changes. It was just as we had left it. Everything was the same for the moment, and as time went on, free content update after free content update went by. We still had no word on highs or the single player DLC we had been waiting on. There was leaks of a rumoured single player expansion, similar to what GTA 4 had done, but there was no news as to what it would be. There were reports that Franklin's voice actor was heading into studio to do some work for GTA 5, but there was still no official statement made by Rockstar. And with the player base dwindling and people getting annoyed at the skyrocketing prices of in-game items and no real way of earning the money honestly, people started to think Rockstar were getting greedy and they just wanted us to buy those shitty shark cards for them. Rockstar knew they needed to speed things up, and they finally came forward and announced the new pieces. Heist was coming to GTA Online on March 10th. Oh, thank fucking god! I got so fucking tired of rooftop rumble, man. Oh, and GTA 5 was coming to PC the following month. For the PC Master Race, they were stoked to finally get their hands on it, if they couldn't already. But for those of us with both options, we had a moment of, again? But we just did this, didn't we? But it was fair and it was fine. We did know a PC port was going to be coming eventually, so it wasn't a huge gripe. In fact, a lot of people were excited, because you know the best thing about PC? MODS, MOTHERFUCKER! The modding potential for this game was huge, and I mean, look at all this shit done in GTA 4. Imagine that shit, but in GTA 5. People were creaming to start dusting off their legitimate mod tools and get to work. But with both Heist and PC, there was a small issue. For PC, there were rumours that you could get banned from playing if there was any awareness to modding in your game. For a while, it was an issue, but eventually Rockstar came out and cleared everything up. It was more or less if they found you using mods online, you would be kicked. But that was never clarified earlier. So with the news, the PC powerhouse became a perfect modding platform. And now, we're going to jump back to GTA Online. Heists were here, and how were they? Well, the setups were huge, long and difficult, the eventual heist missions were kind of boring and nothing unlike the already existing missions in the game. Which, while you were doing, and all the effort you put in, you get a fuckload of piss for it. When we hear heists, we expect payouts like the single player game, but no, they fucked us. For one of the heists, the max payout is around about $1 million split up between four of you. And if you're a team of players, it's usually a 25% cut all round. So $250,000 each, which is hog shit. I know you can get more than that, but like if you play on hard, it's a what, 1.5 times bonus? Okay, so an extra 100 grand or so? Cool. At that point in time, one of the most expensive and wanted vehicles was the Hydra at about $4 million. 
So, if you wanted to save up to purchase this, you would have to play the heist over and over again about 10 to 12 times roughly. And with the setups and heist times taking over an hour, you have to spend over 10 hours just to make up that cash. It doesn't sound like a lot of time in theory, but fuck, would you want to sit there and complete these heists that many times over? Talk about a major grind. I do know there are ways to get more money from heists, but if you want to try and complete all the setups and highs on hard without dying once, be my fucking guest. And if you can come back to me and show me that you did it without any issue, I will legitimately eat my own shoe. Fast forwarding a bit in GTA Online, we start going through more expansions, more cars, more things, and we finally reach the first of our business expansions, the CEO offices. When these came out, the hype was sort of coming back. You get to own a business and make a good amount of cash doing jobs for the business. That sounds alright, I can do that. With the CEO office, there are a few different businesses you can own, such as a cargo warehouse or a, or a vehicle warehouse. Both sort of work the same. You drive to the location, grab the thing, try and safely bring it back, sell it off, try and safely deliver it to the location, take the cash, and Bob's your bleeding uncle. But in order to earn these easy tanks, you gotta spend some money first. To even properly get started, you gotta drop about a million on the office. Then, you gotta purchase a warehouse for about the same price. So, time to get that heist money together. And even when you finally start doing these missions, you gotta spend money during the missions anyway. So your cut isn't even the real cut. And like, why the fuck is this car selling for $1.5 million, but I get $100,000 of it? Motherfucker, I nearly died getting your shitty car for you. Pay me more, you fuck. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Let's just, um... Let's just keep going, let's just uh, jump ahead a little bit more. As more free updates came along, the arrival of the motorcycle clubs and drug organizations were here. Here comes the spend money to make money thing again, and it's the exact same as before. Buy a motorcycle club as a front, and then buy one of the drug businesses as well. So you're probably gonna spend about anywhere from 1 million to 1.5 million dollars for that. And then with the businesses, you do a similar thing. You have supplies which you can buy or steal. Don't fucking bother stealing it, because you get shit all. If you buy it, you gotta spend money, but you get the right amount of supplies to sell off for a good margin. So once the supplies are bought, your employees will start to work on it. But if you want more efficient work done and to not be fucked by the cops, you gotta start upgrading. And holy fuck off! So now you gotta save up even more money for the upgrades by mixing your different missions together, you know, doing supply runs, doing vehicle runs, and then you can buy your upgrades and then move on to another business. Rinse and repeat until you catch them all. This is fucking tedious, but we aren't even done yet. Doomsday Heist, baby! The Doomsday Heists are definitely better than the stock ones we got prior, but guess what? Spending more dollar dollar, baby! Motherfucking shit, that's expensive! You gotta buy a bunker to do these heists, but guess what? The bunker doubles as a business that works the same as all the rest. So, buy the supplies, buy the upgrades, JESUS HOLY FUCK! Sell the supplies and do the same with all your businesses whilst trying to do the heist on the side. And well, I will say you do get quite a bit of money when you have all these businesses. But who the fuck wants to go through all this for in-game shitty money to buy shitty flying bikes that are shit without purchasing shitty upgrades to make the shitty shit do some shitty shit? <sighs> uh, okay, 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 I'm calm. I'm calm. Motherfucking nightclubs, baby! Gay Tony's arrived in town and he wants you to buy a nightclub. Well, you know what, Tony? It's my fucking money, so suck my dick, you shit blanket. Anyway, buy the nightclub, do your setups, buy upgrades, OH FOR FUCK'S SAKE! And luckily, this business works in the background whilst you do other things, but you get a shitload of nothing for it. And on top of all that, you have to employ people, which costs even more money. But once you own all the shit and upgrade all the fuck, you are basically a god in GTA Online servers. People will bow down to you. You fucking own everyone. You make more money than they ever could. You have so many cars, so many businesses, the scum shouldn't even be allowed to look at you because you are that snobby and rich. And even with all that in mind, you will still get killed by some childish fucking oppressor Mark II as if you are nothing to them. And that's GTA Online for you. But, 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 wait, there is even more to fuck you over. Now what to do with all this spending money? You've already bought everything in the game. You have such an ego, you might as well smack your own mum and call her trash for not being as rich as you. So, what's a better thing to do than to spend all your cash in a casino? The Casino DLC brought with it casino apartments, casino minigames, and new heists. 
which actually give you a good amount of cash for once. But I don't want to get into it. The Casino DLC was something that was more or less long awaited. And then it arrived. And it was pretty bleh. Cool. A casino. Spend fake money on fake chips to use on fake games with fake stakes. Wicked cool, hey? I know I probably sound like an old grandpa, but I didn't want this. I didn't want all this to come of GTA 5. GTA 5 itself was left in the dust. GTA Online became the main focus, and we could have had something amazing if Rockstar just did something with a single player. But no, they were greedy. Microtransactions were bringing them in so much cash. At one point, they earned $500 million from microtransactions alone in one year. That's ridiculous. But GTA Online is still being played. And hell, I do still jump on every now and then. I have my businesses to keep up with. But making money is such a drag sometimes, and none of my friends care enough about online to join me for heists. So it's basically a dead-end street for me. I spend most of my times in solo lobbies because the player base can be so toxic. There is still some good to be had with Grand Theft Auto V and GTA Online. But it currently is just a shadow of its former self. Where, in my opinion, did GTA V and Online start going downhill? Well, personally, GTA Online never had stable footing. It was always rolling down the hill. Just sometimes it hit a bump that would bring it up a bit. But no matter how high you go, you'll always fall back down. But if I had to put a pin in it, I would have to say it'd be from the point of gun running up to probably after hours. This period of GTA's lifespan was just sort of where everything got more expensive and missions were getting harder, payouts were not really getting much better, the business activities were still more or less the same thing each time, and not to mention the introduction of flying vehicles like the Oppressor, the Oppressor Mark II, and of course, the Deluxo. These things were just way too OP, and even though they were at a pretty high price margin, they were still pretty easy to get regardless. They ruled GTA Online, and it's basically become a griefer's lounge at this point. But I will say, it is currently left on a high note with the casino stuff. It's quite a good spot for them to leave off. The casino games are pretty fun, the new heists give you quite a lot of money, and not to mention every day you can have your roll at the wheel, so you can possibly win a free car, get some free money, get some XP, or whatever. But if they can find their way back up, everything will be fine. But, I mean, GTA 5 is done for me now. So here's hoping that GTA 6 is a project made from a lesson learned. Oh, yeah, the PlayStation conference. Shit, I'd been meaning to catch up on this. Wait, Rockstar? Oh my god. Oh my god, is it true? GTA 6? Why did I move here? I guess it was the weather. You fucking cunts. Are you serious? GTA 5 is coming to PS5? What the hell? Are you trying to outdo Skyrim for the most times a game has been ported across platforms? Oh my god, this is a joke, Rockstar! You should be entirely ashamed of yourselves. There better be a single-player DLC or something worth buying it again, because I ain't gonna fall for this trick again! You hear me? I ain't that stupid to fall for this shit for a third- No, 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 fourth time! I am not that stupid! This is EB Games, how can I help you? Hey there, um, can I please put a copy of GTA 5 on pre-order for the uh, PlayStation 5? Oh, uh, the PS5, sorry? Y yes, thank you. You're a damn sucker, boy. Well, guys, that was a long one. I put a lot of work into this, and god, I hope it pays off and makes sense. It's sort of a history of, but I just wanted to make it no matter how it turned out in the end. After seeing GTA 5 being ported to the next gen consoles, I just... I just wanted to go off at Rockstar a little bit. Now I know I didn't mention the executive offices, the executive facilities, and also the arcades, but it's just more or less because I personally haven't purchased a facility, so I didn't want to jump on there and talk about something I wasn't aware of. And same with the arcades, and I know technically arcades were the last thing to be put to the game, but the casino DLC was the really huge one. The arcades are the same as the other businesses, except you can manage all of the businesses in the one arcade and stuff, I know that, but I just didn't want to overplay the video as much as it already was. It would have added another 5-10 minutes if I, you know, spoke about it, and it would have had to play the game for another, like, 
four hours to get the money in order to buy both the things and have the experience necessary to talk about them so i didn't want to overstay my welcome but i hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you did here's your end of video reminder to hit the subscribe button hit the like button and hit the notification bell thank you guys so much for sitting through to the end of watching this video catch us later